Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the closet room. As you can see today, we are talking about clothing today and hopefully from the title you can gather that today we're talking about wardrobe staples. Now I have done many sprinklings of wardrobe staple kind of like seasonally dependent videos in the past before. I've done a winter capsule wardrobe in the past. I've done some kind of like fall and spring staples, some new in hauls, things like that. But I haven't actually done an all around general wardrobe wardrobe staples video since 2017 and when I go back and watch that video it is insane to see how much I have grown and changed in terms of my style and the pieces that I have in my wardrobe and I thought that it was high time that I redid a wardrobe staples video so that's what I'm doing here for you today I have 15 pieces 15 items that I personally believe are a staple guideline to building your wardrobe if you're wanting to embrace the capsule wardrobe the minimalist style kind of life having your staples covered is a really good way to build your wardrobe up from there or to just stick to those things all together but having these 15 like core pieces is a great guideline to follow when building up your wardrobe and making sure that you have all the pieces necessary to mix and match and utilize as much of your wardrobe as possible. So it's taken me some time. I've definitely had some style flip-flops over the years and unfortunately that's all been <laughs> documented here on YouTube, but I have a few outstanding pieces that I would love to add, which I'll talk about. But for the most part, I feel like I have now over the last few months and years gathered up a great core collection of staple pieces for my wardrobe. I think that wardrobe staples are definitely dependent on where you live and the climate that you are getting dressed in. Obviously, if I was in like 30 degrees Celsius plus weather, my wardrobe staples would look a lot different, but I do live in Canada and we have four very true real seasons. And these are some of the pieces that in general get me through the entire year, all of those seasons, but obviously there are going to be seasonal pieces that you can mix and match. And it's, it's gonna depend on what weather you're living in, but these are some pretty great staples to start with. And in general are just my most worn staples. And I will say that staples, closet staples, closet essentials. Those are my favorite videos. I just love watching them. I love seeing what's in people's wardrobes. I'm such a snoop. <laughs> I also love creeping like the Pinterest boards that people make of wardrobe staples. And for the most part, they all follow a very similar structure. You'll see a lot of similar pieces across many people's staples and essential videos and content and whatnot. So hopefully this will be helpful to you. Hopefully if you are looking to build your wardrobe, pick up some staple and essential pieces for your closet, hopefully this will be a great guideline for you. Now, I also wanted to say a few of these pieces are old. I will in the description box link as many of the pieces that are available as possible and where I can, if some things are old or no longer available, I will try my best to find some dupes and link those for you below. With all that being said, my friends, let us get started and I'm going to show you my 15 wardrobe staples. Now, before we get onto the rack, I'm actually gonna start our wardrobe staples with shoes. And my first shoe staple is a white sneaker. These bad boys right here, just a really crisp, clean white sneaker. Uh, literally goes with everything. It's a very casual and very comfortable style, yet when you're wearing like the crisp white shoe, I feel like it just makes everything look extra fancy and put together. And I had my old Common Projects, which is just their regular, I think it's the Achilles sneaker, and I could never break it in. My feet were just constantly blistered and bloody. So I actually got this court version, which is a little bit more of a loose version of their regular sneaker style. And I love these so much. They are new this year. And obviously we haven't been outside of the house too much, but a white sneaker like rain or shine, winter, summer, whatever, a white sneaker is a staple and goes with absolutely everything. <laughs> it's such a versatile shoe and I'm really happy I found a pair that doesn't tear up my heels. Now the second shoe staple I'm gonna mention is one that I actually don't have and I'm currently on the hunt for and that is a black loafer. And I did mention this in one of my previous videos where I was styling some Instagram looks and whatnot in a vlog. And one thing that I feel like I'm constantly missing in my wardrobe and I'm reaching for the idea of is a black loafer. And keep in mind, like I know exactly which loafers I want. They are just unfortunately out of stock and I've been unable to get them for some time. So I put myself like on a million wait lists waiting for these freaking loafers. They're perfect and they're beautiful. And I'm very particular about the style of what I want, but I think that a classic black loafer or any loafer in particular, depending on what colors you're kind of going for. I think like a cream or a white loafer can be so beautiful as well. But but let me tell you, a black loafer is what I'm missing and I think that I will feel so much more complete in my shoe category for my wardrobe staples once 
I do get my hands on that black loafer. So black loafers, need it. I need it. <laughs> so my third shoe staple, yes, you heard that correctly. Third are a pair of black boots. Now in my previous wardrobe staples and styling videos, I would have said that a pointed black booty would have been my staple. And I've gone through many pairs over the years. I used to have a Sam Edelman pair, a Vagabond pair. Like I have worn and destroyed so many black booties in my lifetime. They were such a staple. And this is the pair that I currently have in my wardrobe. However, I do feel like in the last year or two, I've kind of switched my gears a little bit in terms of footwear and I find myself really seeking comfort over anything else. So even though this is a very, well, it's not, it sounds like a mid heel. These heeled black booties though are beautiful and I still love them and I do wear them. I don't actually find that as much of a staple piece in my wardrobe as much as a combat or a chunky boot. And that has been the replacement of these booties. So these are the two that I have in my wardrobe currently. I have this chunky kind of slip on Chelsea boot that I got earlier in the fall from H&M. This exact style is unfortunately sold out, but you can find this similar style in so many stores and available online in so many places at varying price points and I have worn these. <laughs> I just realized I'm holding this up. I did not need to be holding these up at the same time. Anyway, I love the style. I know it's kind of like a cilantro thing. You either love or hate the chunky boot, but I have gotten so much wear out of these and it's completely replaced my love for the pointy boot just because these go with absolutely everything and they're so comfy. This pair in particular is really, really lightweight and I've just been wearing a chunky boot nonstop. Now in that same breath, this is a pair of combat boots that I actually got from Prada. I think it's been two years now. This is my third winter that I have worn these boots. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this is my best luxury like high-end purchase I've ever made just out of the sheer amount of wear that I get out of these so though this is kind of cheating I am kind of doing a two-in-one here this is just black boots in general but there's kind of it just depends on your personal style and comfort levels of what you want that black boot to look like I think the black boot is the staple but you couldn't ask me to choose between these chunky boots and these combat boots now that I have them. I wear them both equally and I love them so much. These ones have definitely just been in my closet for a lot longer and they continue to be a staple in my wardrobe life. So black boots, whatever shape or form you prefer, they go with absolutely everything and it's an absolute necessity in your wardrobe. Again, depending on where you live, it is climate dependent. <laughs> So those are the shoes out of the way. Let's move on to the clothing rack. Now my wardrobe staple number four might come as a surprise to you because I previously talked about leather pants and my love for leather pants. And those would be like a, a more classic leather pant with a button and a proper, you know, like belt loop style, all that. But this year I've really come to realize that my, my true love lies in the leather legging. This is the Daria leather pant from Aritzia. And the key with these, I got a lot of DMs actually when I was talking about it on Instagram. The key with this is I got the extra long one. I don't like a cropped leather legging. And I think that just helps it when you're wearing them with sneakers, a loafer style shoe. It just looks a little less awkward at where it's cutting the ankle. And then it's a lot easier to tuck into like those chunkier black boots, but a leather legging. I think for me in particular, I found this to be a lot more useful, a lot more comfortable. These are really, really stretchy and some leather pants can be super uncomfortable. Not that I don't like them. I do have leather pants in my wardrobe, but I think in terms of a leather bottom, I prefer the legging out of comfort and slimming on the leg. Like I just prefer the look on myself anyway. And because I wear so many oversized, like big chunky shirts and sweaters, this just adds a really nice like slimming effect to those looks. So the leather legging, number four. Let's move on to staple number five. And that is a neutral trouser. Now I've always been a pants gal. I love me some pants. It's taken me a really long time to get into the dresses world. And so it's always been a good trouser or dress pants that has gotten me through all of my clothing and wardrobe staple needs. This pair in particular is an older version of the Arquette wool tapered trouser. And I actually made such a blunder. I did a video when I first purchased these and did a haul. And in that haul, I had actually ordered a size 40, the European size 40. And I was super unfamiliar with the Euro sizing. And it took me a long time to come to grips with the fact that they didn't fit me properly. So by the time I went to order my correct size, which is the 38, they only had this shade. They were out of the black and the gray, which 
were the three neutral trousers that I had originally purchased. And I was like, yes, this is perfect. This is everything I need. All my staple trousers covered beige, black, and gray. And then when I went to purchase them in the right size, <laughs> RIP, they were no longer available. So I am currently still on the hunt to complete my kind of perfect trouser collection. But this color in particular, the beige, goes with so many things. Another thing I'm really particular about is the material. And I find that there's a lot of really beautiful styled trousers that do exist, especially on like more affordable sites like H&M and Zara and whatnot. But there's a lot of materials that are kind of more crepey, more linen-y, they wrinkle really easily. And that's kind of my least favorite thing and why I've actually cleared out a lot of other pants and trousers from my wardrobe is that when you're sitting, like if you have a meeting or you're at work and you're just sitting all day and then it has that horrible, horrible wrinkling and bunching around the crotch and butt area and it just doesn't look good. But this particular like wool blend material and other certain materials and trousers, just finding one that has a really nice hang and drape on the leg is what I really look for. It's been a lot of trial and error, but these Arquette ones have been my favorites so far. They actually have since brought a different version back in black and gray. So there's definitely a few options there, but their duties to Canada are awful. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for something I can find in the homeland. But yeah, neutral trousers, a classy lady staple. They go with so many things and they're super comfortable. And I feel like any kind of tailoring or suiting in your wardrobe just elevates everything one extra notch. So trousers, there we go. I'm still on the hunt for a few shades. I'd also love to add white to that. I feel like my, my wardrobe in life is really missing a white trouser as well. Let's talk about staple number six, and that is denim. And if you guys have been following me and my channel for some time, then you will know that I have gone through quite the denim adventure. And like I mentioned earlier, I do have kind of an awkward body type. I have some pretty tough legs and, and hip proportions to fit into jeans. So denim and jeans in the vision that I want them to look like in my wardrobe has proven to be quite a difficult task. And I've just kind of accepted that jeans are never gonna look the way I necessarily want them to on me. And so instead I opt for comfort. And my most recent purchases have been the A Goldie Balloon jeans, which I previously stated in a video that were my perfect jeans. I found them and when I'm looking for denim, I am looking for a high rise fit. I am looking for some kind of elastane component in the materials. I don't like 100% cotton. I like to be comfy and to be able to bend and stretch and breathe and live my life in my denim. So though the denim might not be the most flattering, I do look for comfort in my denim so i do have a few options here a few of my favorite pieces of denim that i have worn and that i wear consistently in my wardrobe the first one in particular is actually a pair of uh, flared denim that i love high-waisted super flare i got these off of zara zara has amazing denim they have a lot of options and they continue to come out with a lot more options so if you're looking for a more affordable denim i often look to zara the only problem is that they're pretty inconsistent in terms of what's actually available and in stock like i mentioned before i have the goldie balloon ones which are super stretchy they're wonderful they're very high-waisted and they're nice and fitted up here so they give a nice slimming effect until it gets to the balloon leg <laughs> that's when it kind of loses its uh flattering shape but I also have the a goldie 90s mid-rise loose I believe they're called and this is my only kind of ripped pair of denim that I've kept in my wardrobe and these actually ironically enough over the last couple of years have been my most worn pair of denim I just love how they roll up I love wearing them with boots they have a nice distressed look and though I don't like how they sit up on my waist the bottom like when I'm wearing it with an oversized sweater or a shirt I actually just love how they poke out. Does that make sense? I love the bottom of the jeans. <laughs> and then finally, I also have the Goldie 90s jeans in white. And this was a more recent purchase as well. I, I often reach for the more like classic blue, light blue, dark blue denim, but I was excited to expand my wardrobe life into a white shade, adding another neutral to the wardrobe that can go with many different things. This can be a summer white or a winter white. So denim, finding a pair that works best for you, finding something that you're comfortable in and that you feel amazing in. A good pair of denim can go a long way and can be mixed and matched with literally everything in your wardrobe, every single thing. So denim is key. <laughs> you guys, I'm still in disbelief over this next one, but truly in disbelief that it took me 27 years to discover this staple piece in my wardrobe. And that is a neutral bodysuit. Number seven, bodysuits, my friends. What a joy to humans bodysuits are and I can't believe I only discovered them in 2020 and what a glorious discovery it has been if you have followed along with my bodysuit journey hello <laughs> Yes, we are still here and we are still going strong bodysuits for me have just been I mean truly such a discovery But they are so comfortable 
they layer with absolutely everything and it kind of like I like the look of tucking in my top into whatever bottom I'm wearing and oftentimes a shirt can be super unflattering or really difficult to achieve the tucked look with and the bodysuit just erases that issue. And I will say one thing I look for with the bodysuit is a thong bottom. I don't like it when you get that big line. Like I've been wearing thongs since junior high. I'm not about to start having a panty line now in my adult life. So I always look for a bodysuit with a thong bottom and um, it's taken a little bit of getting used to. I don't necessarily enjoy the feeling of the buttons on the bottom and then the ones that don't have the button clasp. You know, it's not an enjoyable process. It takes time going to the bathroom. But for me, the bodysuits thus far have been worth it and have become an absolute wardrobe necessity. And I don't know what I was doing in my wardrobe staple life before I discovered bodysuits. The bodysuits have kind of replaced my wearing of t-shirts in my wardrobe. Gasp, shock horror, I know. <laughs> Blazers, cardigans, wearing sweaters over top, wearing a jacket over top. Like in terms of layering, you cannot find a better option than a bodysuit. Yeah, it's just been a delight. So I labeled this as neutral bodysuits. These are the three like favorites that I have in my wardrobe. Um, I do have a white one. This is an a goldy one. I have a lighter beige bodysuit from Alex NYC. This brand has so many bodysuits, it's literally their thing. If you're looking for a bodysuit, you are most likely going to find one <laughs> from Alex NYC. So yeah, just this like lighter neutral shade. And then also this bodysuit from Zara is one of their ribbed bodysuits. And this black has been such a favorite and again, just goes with everything. So I feel like if you have a couple neutral shades of bodysuits, you essentially have a very clean and perfected neutral wardrobe, huge, huge staple. Now following up from my previous t-shirt comment, like I said, the bodysuits have kind of replaced the t-shirt wearing in my wardrobe life for the most part. However, I will say that having a good solid graphic tee for me, like I've loved graphic tees my whole life. I've always had some kind of graphic tee kicking around in my wardrobe, but it's taken me a few tries to find the right one and find the right fit. And I have since settled on this particular Anina Bang style and I've previously had some of her more thicker like vintage tee versions but she recently came out with a series of t-shirts in this fabric it's just this more thin material it's a little bit more loose and she's actually done a number of different collaborations with some really nice graphics where it doesn't feel like too juvenile to me i think this is still a really nice womanly photo on here <laughs> And another thing that I've changed with my t-shirts actually is I've started ordering them in size large. When I am wearing a graphic tee, I do like that really nice cozy oversized hang fit to the t-shirt. So I actually started getting them in a size large just to give me more room. I feel nice and flowy. And again, because it's that nicer thin material, it does just have quite a flattering hang to it. So I've really loved this. I have this graphic and then I also have the Helena Christensen collab she did and these two t-shirts pretty much since I've had them have been the only ones I've worn. So graphic tee, uh, a tasteful graphic tee and one that you feel is most flattering for your body shape, I feel like is a great wardrobe staple. And it's a nice way to add a little bit of subtle color to your look. So this with a blazer, I feel like just looks so good with a pair of jeans, a pair of trousers, shorts, whatever. Love the graphic tee. Wardrobe staple number nine, guys. You could not have me talking about wardrobe staples in any capacity without mentioning a button down shirt. And I, I realized, do you say button up or button down? I, th I think I use both interchangeably, but most commonly I say button down. I'm super curious to hear what you guys say and why. But just in general, a shirt. <laughs> um, nothing is worn more in my wardrobe than this white shirt. And this one in particular is from Arquette. There are so many versions. Almost every single clothing website has some kind of version of a classic white shirt. I myself too have definitely a couple of white shirts in my wardrobe. And that's also because I destroy all of my white clothing with bronzer and fake tan. No white piece of clothing is safe in my wardrobe. However, I continue to buy it and I continue to wear them because it is just such a staple. So this one in particular is the oversized cotton poplin version from Arquette. And my staple is an oversized version because I just prefer that fit and that shape. And I think it's a little bit more versatile because you can wear anything over top of it. Like I personally love to layer any sweater, crew neck sweater, v-neck sweater, a big chunky turtleneck, over top of my shirts. And so I like it to be a little bit longer in length so that it pokes out at the bottom and gives it that cool little fashionista layered vibe, you know? <laughs> in the summertime, I love to wear it just really loosely buttoned, maybe like half tucked into my shorts. Like I just get so much, like there's so much you can do with a white shirt. If you have any takeaway from this video, get yourself a great fitting white shirt. This one needs a steam so badly. I actually did recently wash this 
and was dismayed to find that the bronzer was in fact there to stay on the collar. But yeah, classic white shirt. You can never go wrong with having this in your closet. Closet staple number 10, you guys. I am labeling this one as a go-to blouse because this is gonna be different for everyone, but I think it just depends on what your personal style is and what you feel the best and most comfortable in. For me, my go-to blouse is actually this Isabel Marant Etoile blouse, and I got this, I think it's been a few years ago now. I actually got it in a Saks sale when Vanessa and I were on a little gals trip in New York, and it's one of the best purchases I ever made. I love this blouse so much. I can't tell you how much I have worn this blouse with absolutely everything. If you guys have been watching my channel, you've definitely seen this blouse. I wear it so much. And it's a super classic, easy black blouse. It's got a nice slim fit with some fun little details on the collar and the sleeves. But because it's this like lovely linen blend, I can wear it all year long. It's not seasonal dependent. It's a nice light fit and it just goes with absolutely everything. I love this blouse. However, this is also a category where it would be nice to kind of play with a little bit more color in your wardrobe. I think just having some go-to blouses that you don't have to think about, you don't have to necessarily style in a particular way. You just throw on the blouse, throw on whatever pants and you're good to go. Having those easy one and done pieces in your wardrobe is great. And with the blouses in particular, adding some color to the wardrobe is a very easy thing to do. And having little pops of color is nice. So I think if you have a staple go-to like more neutral color blouse, then you've got that covered in your wardrobe and you can play and add some color and add some patterns. I also have like a striped silk blouse that I wear a lot. The blouses is definitely like for me who I'm not the most savvy or most fashionable when it comes to like really like detailed styling. Having just easy blouses to chuck on is definitely a key and a staple for me. So that's that, a go-to blouse. Number 11 guys, this one has such a, such a dear held place in my heart and that is my black blazer and this one in particular was definitely a splurge that i made some time ago this is a gorgeous the like it's the most beautifully tailored structured blazer that i have ever witnessed in my possession and this is an acne studios blazer and it hasn't seen much wear in the recent months which is sad i need to just pull it out and wear it around the house there was actually one day i just took some photos in it because i was like ugh, i miss you i miss wearing you but having a classic blazer whatever color that may be for me it's a black blazer like if i had to burn and get rid of all my blazers this would be the one that i would keep and hold on to and you just can't go wrong suiting tailoring having a blazer you can dress any casual outfit up i've actually been seeing a lot of people wearing like sweat suits with a blazer over top and I kind of love it. <laughs> a blazer looks good with absolutely everything. You can wear it with a skirt, with a dress, jeans, trousers, shorts, whatever. A blazer is always a way to elevate your wardrobe and make you feel more structured, tailored, put together. And this one in particular was definitely worth the splurge for me. Love this so much get a blazer in your life and pay attention to the material. Same thing with the trousers. There are certain blazers that just tend to wrinkle and just not look as good. I opted for a material that was a little bit more thick. It's a really nice wool blend that just holds its shape and holds its structure much more than some other blazers that I have had in the past. So blazer. Now staple number 12 can be kind of interpreted in any way that you see fit for your wardrobe, but I am titling this layering sweater, a layering sweater. And that could be a crew neck or a V-neck. It could be a more chunky kind of knit sweater like this. For my wardrobe in particular, my most go-to and most staple layering sweater would be my v-neck equipment sweater. I actually have this uh, styled here with a black blouse underneath it, but this one, it's, listen, it needs a good little de-bobbling, that's for sure. She is due for some care and attention. <laughs> but like I mentioned before, with any of my blouses or my shirts, I love to layer sweaters over top. That's just my personal style. It's one of my favorite things to wear and it's been consistent for many years and having a nice v-neck or a crew neck just a layering sweater is a very very versatile piece in your wardrobe no matter what the color you could have a really fun pattern or any pops of color what have you but the great thing is that they look amazing by themselves when you're wearing them or they layer perfectly with anything in your wardrobe so this version I got is actually a little bit more loose fitting it's a little bit more oversized so it layers over top of my shirts very easily and then it has a nice like hang and like casual chill vibe when it's sitting on my body by itself. So having a layering sweater, this one, I just love this v-neck and I wear it so, so, so much. And it is a layering staple in my wardrobe, absolutely. Staple number 13 is also going to be kind of one of those ones that's dependent on your climate and where you live. But for me and my personal style, 
layering with any of the pants, the leather leggings, what have you. It's an oversized sweater. So for me, obviously I have a deep, <laughs> long-standing love with turtlenecks. So for me in my wardrobe, this is an oversized turtleneck and it's a piece that I get endless, endless wear out of, especially in the winter. But this is also something you can apply to the summertime, having a nicer, lighter weight oversized sweater, whether that be a crew neck or a turtleneck style. If you get a lightweight material, you can wear that all year round and layer it up. These are actually the two most recent additions in my wardrobe. I think like having a black oversized turtleneck for me is always a staple, but since I recently discovered this most <laughs> glorious neutral deeper oatmeal shade, Oh my God, I never wanna take it off. I just love them. I feel so cozy in sweaters. Again, if you live in a place with seasons, you gotta have those chunky oversized sweaters. Um, I feel like it looks very chic. Like in an ideal world, I'd be wearing this with my leather leggings and a pair of fabulous heels and just going out to dinner and that. Like, oh my God, I can't wait to go out to dinner again. I miss it so much and I'm so excited to dress up for that. But uh, a staple black always and then any of the other neutral colors. I've also played in the past with pops of color when it comes to my oversized sweaters. For me, that's just such a wardrobe essential and I feel like it just looks really chic and fabulous and it is equally as comfortable. So oversized sweaters, an absolute must have in my closet. Now, of any good things that came out of the last year in 2020, one of my favorite things uh, that was a result of 2020 has been the acceptance and inclusion of leisure and athleisure wear in our everyday lives. I am so thrilled at the fact that sweatsuits and sweat sets and leisure wear has trickled its way into high fashion and chicness and being more widely accepted and considered on the uh, fabulous feeling spectrum. So staple number 14 for me is a neutral matching sweat set. And many different versions or colors can exist on under that umbrella. I definitely have a frightening collection of sweatsuits after the year of 2020 that we have had. But in terms of a staple, I feel like having a nice, good, clean, neutral sweat set in your wardrobe has just, it's become a staple for so many people. And it, sweatsuits are just my most worn items now. Absolutely, and they can very easily be dressed up or dressed down depending on the color, depending on the fit, and depending on the shoes and the coats and whatnot that you are putting with it and how you're accessorizing it, so. And you can basically find a good sweatsuit absolutely anywhere. Almost every single brand, so many people have come out with their own versions of sweatpants and sweatsuits and whatnot after 2020. You can find one anywhere. I did wanna mention that my most worn definitely over the last year has been my Pangaea sweatsuits, and I have my white one in particular that I love, but that's kind of a hit or miss for me because especially when you're shipping into Canada, the price point is on the higher end as far as sweatsuits go. However, my other most worn sweatsuits are from Aritzia and it is their boyfriend sweatsuit. They have like this oversized, really comfy, lovely boyfriend collection. They have a few different styles in it, but I have this lovely like bone colored version, one of my most worn sweatsuits. And because it's this really nice light, clean neutral color i feel like it can still look really put together depending on what you're wearing with it and so when you're wanting those super lazy days you want to feel comfortable but you still want to look somewhat put together a sweatsuit god it's just become such a staple i love them and this boyfriend set from ritzia definitely one of my favorites and i also have a really lovely like rich forest green version of this which i have worn also so much and I just love the fit of these and sweat set has definitely become a staple in my wardrobe. All right guys, staple number 15, the almost <laughs> almost last staple that I wanted to mention today is uh, a piece of outerwear. And again, depending on where you are living, what climate you're living in is gonna determine the outerwear that you have in your wardrobe. Obviously um, for us in Canada, like some kind of very substantial winter parka coat is necessary to get through our winters. In some of my previous past wardrobe staples, I've mentioned a leather jacket, denim jacket. To be honest, I find myself wearing those things less and less, but the one staple that has always remained very true in my wardrobe has been a trench coat. And it did take me some time to find a good trench coat. And I wanted to mention a couple different versions because for those of you who will remember, <laughs> My H&M trench coat, oh my God, this was such a dream. I got this, I, I think it was, it was either $29.99 or $39.99, I don't recall, but I had actually kept the price tag on this jacket for so long and it became kind of a joke like on Instagram and in my videos and stuff because I would always refer to it because I feel like it was a pricing mistake from H&M when I bought this, but I had bought one for myself and I bought one for my mom because I was so ecstatic about finding such a fabulous, very affordably priced trench coat and just having this beige 
trench coat in my wardrobe has been such a staple. So I wanted to mention that there are many, many affordable options that you can find across many different stores. You kind of just have to keep your eye out for the shape and the drape that you are looking for. Me in particular, I love to find one with a belt. That is a, a staple for sure. And I did upgrade that trench coat to a more substantial, long lasting trench. And these two Burberry trench coats, I actually got, I don't, it was like ridiculous. I bought these vintage pre-loved and they're vintage because they're super old. Like they have the very, very old label. And I will say that out of the two, my most worn is the black. I just find this a lot easier to style. I just feel really cool in this. I don't know, I love me this black trench coat. So again, it's like the neutral trench coat, whatever color you think you'll wear the most, but a trench coat, a good fitting one, um, a well-tailored one is like, the best way to elevate everything in your wardrobe. And this one's actually a little bit more of a thicker material. So I do wear this often in the winter, actually, when I'm wearing something like a really big oversized sweater. This is a perfect layering piece. This is my baby. It needs a dry clean so, so badly. <laughs> and out of any other piece of outerwear in my wardrobe, the style kind of goes in and out. The trench coat remains. This has been a staple piece in the world for decades. And in my eyes, this will forever be a staple piece in my closet. So get yourself a good, a good trench coat, my people. And that completes this wardrobe staples video. These are the 15 pieces that I feel like are key and essential to building a well-rounded wardrobe. These are staples to me and obviously the climate that I am living in. And again, I'm very curious to hear what you guys consider staple pieces to be in your wardrobe? Are they different from mine? How similar are our staples? Let me know in the comments down below and I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you all very soon for a new video. Bye!